unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Tonight is wonderful. I'm going to explain why the theme was selected to be so. The Lord spoke to me just a few months ago. And it is something that I've been meditating, praying about seeking his face about the whole thing about what it means to be a man and a man that is of God. Some people think that men of God are the only people who stand on the pulpits here. But you are a man of God in your own right. Somebody say amen. Amen. You are a man of God in your own right. And there is something the Lord has called you to be and do. And tonight, this is what I felt. I felt like this was like pregnancies that are going to come out tonight. I felt like there were potentials that are going to be released in the name of Jesus. I felt that there were abilities that have been hid under the equipment and anything else that are going to come out tonight. And they are going to... Some of you, your course changes today. Say amen. I believe this so much that something has to change for me. 2018 in the name of Jesus Christ somebody say amen Amen. something has to change in my life this 2018 if you believe it say amen Amen. now the theme comes from a story all of us know of a man called Abraham he is 75 years old and is living in the father's house and the Lord comes to Abraham and tells him leave your kindred from thine country and thine father's house and go to a land that I will show thee. And this 75 year old man has to carry his family. He has to carry his children. He has to carry the little things that he has in this life and go to a place the Lord will show him. Many times I've noticed the ways of God are very, very unpredictable. They are not a mystery to the new creature. But they are unpredictable to the man of the flesh. How many of you understand what I'm saying? That is why when you read the scriptures, if you had not understood God the way you and I understand him, Jesus would look like a madman. Hallelujah, somebody. He would look like a madman. The way Jesus used to do things, and I'll preach about this one of these days in one of our fellowships. Because I've been meditating about the mind of God and how he sees things. The the mind of Jesus, the way he's wired. It is different. The Bible says that a Pharisee comes to him in the night. Who was that? Nicodemus. And he tells him that I know that thou art a great teacher. And that you're a man of God because nobody can do these things except by The Holy Ghost, except that God is with him. We know it. We know. This is Nicodemus. And the next verse says, And Jesus answered and told him, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. What had Nicodemus asked? Now imagine, you've come to Jesus, right? And then you're telling, This is, We know that you're a great teacher. And there is nothing you do, Except the Lord is with you. We know it. Because you're a man of God. And then, The moment they are telling him that Jesus changes his mind, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. Do you understand? Imagine you are are anybody else observing two people talking. eh? Somebody has come to Jesus to tell him, you are a great teacher. Nobody does miracles, signs and wonders, except, you understand, except a man be born again. It doesn't. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It would look strange. In John 12, you've read the story. The Greeks come to see Jesus. And they say, the Greeks come and say, we want to see Jesus. These are the Greeks. And when they say, we want to see Jesus, Philip and Andrew, these guys come to to worship at the feast. And the next verse says, 
And the same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, would we see Jesus? These are them saying, would we see Jesus? They want to see him. And now the next verse says, And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, and then they tell Jesus that the Greeks want to see you. So imagine Philip and Andrew, they've come to Jesus and tell him, the Greek people want to see you. And then Jesus says, you see, this is, imagine. And he answered, the hour is come that the Son of Man be glorified. Imagine. <laughs> the Greeks desire to see you. No, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Next verse. Uh, and and uh, 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 verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and it die, it abideth the Lord. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The Greeks have come to see you. Next verse. And he say, Next verse. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in the world, he shall keep This is. This is the Son of God. The Greeks have come to see you. Next verse. If any man shall serve me, let him follow me. Wherever man shall so my servant be. If a man serve me, he will... What has that got to do with the Greeks coming to see you? And I realized one thing about the Christ. He answers men according to their need. The Christ answers according to need. Not just their human expectation. So, the gospel itself has its own confusions to a man who doesn't understand the God we're dealing with. Now, this is Abraham. Probably he's one of the eldest sons of terror, right? And God tells him, you, pack your bags, you, your wife, your children, go to a place I'll show you. And this man has to go places. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to believe. He doesn't know who to find. He's 75 years old, still in the father's household, meaning he's incapacitated in a way. So, if you're fought and you're still in your father's house, Abraham was worse. You understand what I'm saying? And, and God tells him, go to a place I'll show you. Okay? And then he goes and settles in a lonely place. You all know the place Canaan means lowly place. Literally, the translation of Canaan is lowly place. A fake place. And God tells him, aha, that's where I've called you. <laughs> that's where I've called you. You understand what I'm saying? It's not anywhere to be compared with the father's household. The father's household was way better. Whether you agree or understand this as far as I'm speaking it, I believe that everybody bears witness eh? that there is a way God has set a man. Eh? For us, we just walk out. You see, it's like marriage. You go to my woman's family and say, I want you, dude. You understand what I'm saying? And then the parents talk and then they tell you what they want. And you... But for us, we just go. And many of us, if you look at us and look at individually our story, each one of us, there was like a point in life where you just left. You either left your father's household, you left a certain family, but there was like a point where you just unplugged. Now comes the anxiety. Of I'm going where I know not. And there are chances that I'm going to stand in a lowly place called Canaan. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know who is going to help me. How, what help is available for me. In, in fact, I might reach there and I find a dry land. And God says, that is where I will prosper you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because like the man of God earlier said, the responsibility God has given man... The man, you and I, we can't even run away from it. We can't escape it. He puts a garden and tells the man, tend it. Take responsibility. You don't even know where to begin from, but yes, it's there. The dream is there. Now, we know another story that when he stays abides in Canaan, there is competition, they are thriving, they prosper still. And then they have to separate themselves. He tells, Lord, you choose a part and I choose mine. You know that story. And Lord, the Bible says, uh, uh, chose the fertile plains. And the Lord stayed with Abraham. And when he stays with him, he said unto him, while Lot had separated from him, this is now again Abraham alone. Okay? Alone. And, and, and this is funny, that Lot's success was because of Abraham, nothing else. There was, God didn't have a covenant with Lot. But you even see that he became a success because he simply followed the man with a vision. You understand what I'm saying? But this generation is not of Lord. Say amen. amen. Now, I'm going into the point I need to make so I can start preaching. And so, the Lord leaving Abraham alone, 
He tells him, lift up thine eyes. Lift up thine eyes. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up thine eyes. And in meditating of these things, you know, when you tell people that uh, look from the place where that northward, southward, eastward, and westward, even though the Lord is telling Abraham, some people think that he's simply looking at west, right, east, south, and north. No. You see, this was east, north, west, south. From upward. You don't get it. If you are on a ground level, a two-dimensional world, and then they tell you, look north, east, south, and west. For as far as your eye has seen, I have given you. It means he's looking at straight here. This is west. This is east. This is north. This is south. That is the two dimensional. When he's lifted. And he still has to observe the north. From a lifted place. With lifted eyes. I'm not talking about... Man, am I talking to somebody? When he's lifted, and God has to tell him, in the lifting, look north, look south, look east and west, for as far as your eye has seen, that I have given you. He tells him, walk there. And he became the father of the earth. Because he saw from above. Okay? Now, going into the point I wanted to make, I see that... The biggest blessing that Abraham has received in a lowly place is vision. It's all he has. He doesn't have anything else. You understand what I'm saying? And I told people many years ago that it was the vision that Abraham observes that defines the circumference of his influence. Now when we call him Abraham, the father of, of all believers. It was something he saw, right? That's general knowledge. But now it comes to the ultimate blessing for which every man in this world has been ordained. You don't need a car. You don't need a house. You don't need a big building. You don't need money on your account. The biggest ordained blessing of Almighty God to a man is to give you a vision. I'm not talking about the vision to finish your education. I'm not talking about the vision of your career. I'm talking about the vision of your life. The vision of your life. Somebody say, tonight something is changing. Say it again and say, tonight something is changing. The vision of your life. You look at men who are struggling with drugs, alcohol, struggling with women and all these kinds of things. When you look inside that man's life, you realize the frustration... Is the place where he can't place his potential next to what he's feeling inside. The ability of what he can manifest outside versus the thing that he feels inside. You see, we men are not like women. We don't know how to melt affections and talk. Men are not talking human beings. Men, it's hard for... You know, if you find a man who just knows how to sit down and tell you his problems, that man has a problem. Men don't know how to narrate. How many of you understand what I'm saying? You can't get back home. And, and sometimes that's why I feel sorry for our wives. Because she expects you to narrate how you made the loss the whole day. No, you have to talk to me. You, you're not being a pastor. I, I counsel. And then a woman saying, you see, Apostle, the problem with my husband is he doesn't talk to me. Amen. If I have a witness, Waniko Muliri, you get my point? We don't know how to communicate frustrated potential. Because this is not just another setback of a disappointment. No, it robs us of our true identity. It's like a woman narrating that, you know I can't breastfeed, you know I don't have... You understand? It's, it's her given mandate by God. It's, that's why she has breasts. You understand? That she can be... We don't know how to narrate frustrated potential. We don't know how to sit down and I tell you, you know what? I entered a deal and then this guy robbed me. There are many who have made losses and your wives don't even know. Not because you don't want to talk, but how do I start narrating? 
Do you get my point? And, 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 and you're like a bit like Abraham because you look like you have a vision, but it's not clear, but it is inside your spirit. You, you have a definition of things you don't have words for. But this woman is observing you every other day. And she's like, no, no, superstar, Lagawa. You understand? Because you, you, you promised us this is going to happen. Next year I'm planning. There's a way you know how to talk. Eh? You know next year when I'm planning like this because I'm going to do that. And of course I think we are going to leave this house and shift here. You, they, for them they are recording. Leave house. And then I want to ship the children from a cheaper school. I need my expensive schools. My children need to study. As you are expressing vision, she's weighing dates and times of fulfillment. Simanya men, you are understanding what I'm saying. And then Simanya next year, I need to do this. You understand? And then the time frame of when you promised this was going to happen comes. And what you said has not yet what? come to pass yet. Now, the words to express to this woman that I have not yet gotten it. But it is inside somewhere. I don't have words to express to you that this situation is going to change. I know I've gone past the, ex- the dead now. I'm in expire mode. Surviving on words. Eh? You understand what I'm saying? But when I check inside there, the thing is still in there. Do I have a witness? Now if you marry a woman who is... God forbid. That's when the conversations start. Over dinner they start talking. You see, you know I mark your words. You said that in 20 this, you're going to... Did you do it? Then you said... That you're going to do this. Did you do this? No. Then you say that you're going to do this. Did you do this? No. Are you hearing me? Then after that, there's this sullenness, that softness in your spirit that starts to tell you. You, you, you are even poised to curse your vision or even doubt that the Lord is with you. Because when you were 20, it was automatic that vision was in your spirit. You know when a woman is 20 or 22, there are visions sometimes, and I'm sorry to say if there are women here. They, some of them, they, they don't see further than you. There are many. You know, will I marry? How will they look like? You understand? That's why that's a prayer request of not all, but majority of them which we know. <laughs> then maybe a career issue. I want to become a doctor. What, what, what? Not many women start thinking, then I'll build a... Well, no, no. Those, their prayer requests are limited there, around there. Not many can say now and then I'll build a big uh, building then I'll buy like five plots of land and no, it's not many, many of them are around now, the man who I'll marry is he a man of, okay, so check do I, how many children should I have, yes check, and it's okay because even them, the Lord has called them that way are you hearing? but if you're a man you'll understand that when you were 20 your dreams were already crazy when you became 25, your dreams became crazy. Are you hearing me? Men dread every other birthday. You understand? Because every birthday you check yourself. That is why you, you, you find men don't like birthdays. Ha! Ah, instead of making me a birthday party, God, fulfill a potential in my spirit. Let this all oh, shut up. Let something happen in my life that I can see tangible. It's okay if they don't count a birthday. That one can pass. Because I'm not interested in blowing candles and cutting cake. Ah, whatever is inside this guy. Katori Mando Sankatai. For me, I'm a preacher. Now, a businessman, you can relate in your own version. I don't need a birthday party. I just need Fanero to increase. Let me see something come out. God, but the party can go the other side because I don't count my days of years, no. I count every milestone that I've achieved in the potential of what God put inside me. Let me tell you, a man can literally die because that which is inside is not coming out. That is why a man can't start saying, You even forgot my birthday. Do you love me? No. Woman, forget. Forget my birthday, even my father's. I don't care. But I don't want her to forget to 
to qualify me when I need it. I must, I might go past expiry date. Are you hearing me? But I need my wife to still look at me and say, Man of God, I believe in what is inside you. I don't know whether I'm communicating to somebody. This year has failed, but I feel next year. It is our year. You understand what I'm saying? That is called a woman. But I, those of you who are not yet married, consider, are you hearing me? When you meet a girl, just see. It's, you, you know when the Bible speaks of women who build homes? Those are the kinds of women we need. Cut that I can say, Kati. Because you don't have anywhere to report to me. You understand it? Don't first look away from the looks. First ignore the castile. Are you hearing me? Look at how she responds in your time of pressure. Are you hearing me? When you get back home are you, and they're expecting food, and then she has already put on the stove and, and she's put food in, the, she, there's no food, and, and she has even warmed the water, assuming that you're going to come with rice and meat. And then you come with nothing. Are you hearing me? And then you tell her, you know what? <laughs> ay, ay, I don't want to confess badly, but today, today we had a kill. Translate to the other way because I can't communicate the wrong way. The communication of my faith becomes effectual as I acknowledge every good thing which is in me, which is in Christ. I'm sorry, woman, I cannot tell you that I don't have money for posture and rice. Ah, uh-uh, I can't confess that. I can only tell you it is so wonderful today that we don't have food. And then she says, Mohammed, don't worry. Uh uh-uh, uh, that's not a problem. I have a hundred shillings here. I can go and buy tea. Majani. In this water which we've boiled, we allow sugar and sleep. That is why one time I told people, don't think it was easy for Abraham to get Isaac and not tell Sarah. When the Lord told him, kill the man, he just killed him. Come, let's go. <laughs> Mommy, bye. No, no, where are you going? No, we are just going to see some animals. I, I, I will explain later. You understand? Because. Ah! I might not be able to explain to her why I'm going to kill Isaac. It, it looks crazy. I already separated her from the family years ago and took her to a place she didn't know. Kakati, now, I, 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 get, I, I, start, I get Isaac and I tell her, uh, uh, you know, the Lord has spoken to me that I have to give him this guy for his man of vision. Ma, 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 no, no, there's no way you're taking my child. That's when the woman now becomes woman. Are you hearing me? This is my son. Do you know how I carried him for nine months? Are you hearing me? But the Lord spoke to the man, release this guy. Obedience to the next level of your destiny. And you get to a point where even your wife might not agree. But the Lord spoke. The Lord spoke. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. When events around you might not even agree. Some of us, we have done so random things that sometimes before you do it, you make sure nobody's watching you. Because when they watch you, they'll slow you. I don't mean to disrespect. I'm only saying not all women understand. Not all. It's not a disrespecting remark. There are some might not. Not only women. Sometimes even the people around you might never understand. You understand what I'm saying? Let me give you my personal story a bit. I was in 19, I think, I was in campus. And then I have an encounter on a mountain. You understand what I'm saying? And that encounter, the Lord Jesus visits me. I was hit for three days up straight. I sobered up on the third day. The second day I was shaking. The third day is when I came to my senses and realized that the Lord had, had, had given me a special experience. You understand what I'm saying? But what knocked my life that day was a vision. I was no more. Yes, I'd seen Jesus at the age of eight. I'd walked with him for so many years as a child, even though I was not very conscious of many things. My spirit was conscious of the person of Jesus from a young child. I saw things before they happened. I didn't even know it was called prophetic. You see? But as an average person, 
Tell somebody you need an encounter. Do you understand what I'm saying? For some it has happened, for some it hasn't yet, for some it looks like it has, you understand? For others like us, we are saying, God, another one, send, send this one, send them. Because after that encounter, my life changed. Three days, I, I remember that day, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit hit me. I was carried from my body, I was taken to places... Up to today, I don't have the language, but I still carry the vision of reality. That everything that I articulate is a translation simply of the things that are revealed to the end of learned men. Not learning. I'm, I'm not learning. I'm not boasting. And that's the truth. Uh, I'm not learning the gospel. And that's the truth. I'm not boasting. I'm not a learning man. I'm not preaching as I learn. I'm not adopting and mutating as I walk with people such as even me, what I meet, they meet. No, I went to the end of all perfection. So the broadness of the word, as it is, the, the true beginning was the word. <laughs> not the one of Genesis, no. The, the, where the word was with God and the word was God and the same was in the beginning with God and nothing was made. You understand? The, 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 that's why I said, Every man of God, every man of God must begin from the end of all perfection. That the realities of revelation in your spirit are not of the perfections. No, the end of these things. That's why when you're on the end of those things, you can't last. You can't last. The last of the eyes. Oh, I want to see because I want to see. Oh, open my eyes, God, that I can see. So you, you want to see without purpose. Do you understand what I'm saying? The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. The pride of life. You, you want to, to sit 2,000, 5,000, 6,000 people. And then when you have 6,000, 7,000 people, and you, you want to become a god. This pride of life. You, you, you can't speak, you can't shake people's hands anymore because you, eh? you have been anointed. You understand? You, you walk a certain way, you speak a certain way because you've been anointed. You can't be approached. No, you, you, that, you, that's... That's such a lasting man. That's, that's a man still in the indulgences of perfection. Because you look to the glory of what is perfect in the world of men. But when you get to the end of all perfection, and you meet the broadness of the commandment, the first thing that strikes you is humility. And I'll tell you why that humility comes. Because it's the primary consecration of the man's heart toward God. Many men, and, and now let me speak to men, and this could go for the church at large. Many men do not know the difference between the most successful ministers in the gospel and the people who are trying to be successful and will never be successful. And that can go for business, that can go for marriage, that can go for career, that can go for your political aspiration, that can both be, go for your social cues, that can go for any interest and dream that you'll ever have in this world. Let me tell you, there is nothing God requires of a man like his heart. The purity and state of your heart defines how far you will go in God. The, God can deal with anything in this world. There are men, I am sure, God can't give ten members. Because ten is enough for them to abuse a whole nation. There are men, I am sure, God can't give a hundred million shillings. Because a hundred million means he's going to insult a whole village. There are pastors, I know the moment that man eats 500 people, he's going to, oh God, he's going to insult every being there is because his heart is not ready for the vision. It, is, it cannot sustain success. It is too much for them. That is why some, the moment the Lord blesses them, they start to go down. Appoint not a novice, list out of pride. He what? He is destroyed. But why is it? Because the state of your heart is very key. That is why the, that's the, I tell people that's the primary place of purification of conscience. Those are the three things. Consecration. Of consecration. You're sanctified into obedience. You're sanctified into a purification of conscience. And then you're sanctified into the place of your commission. God cannot commission you in a certain way when there's no purity of conscience in your spirit. And that purity of conscience comes from the primary places of obedience. The small things that cause you to keep quiet even when you have an opinion. 
The things that cause you to forgive even when you have a right not to forgive. The things that cause you to hold back your words even when you have the ability to speak them out. The ability that has the place for you to fight for your cause and state your case to prove yourself true to men and yet not true to God because you have won your battle and lost your war. The place where your wife will speak to you a certain way and you'll have to swallow it and say, I'm a man of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I told people, Jacob could not have served Laban and Laban treated Jacob a certain way without the mind of God preparing Jacob to produce 12 tribes. Now, you see Jacob prophesying in all the 12, but he's not just prophesying into their lives for the moments to come. No, he's aligning destinies according to the hearts revealed to him by God. The time where he has to serve a man and, and this man, you, you read scripture, you read this man, this man, the Bible says ten times, ten times he cheated Jacob. Ten times of his salary. And when animals went missing, Jacob says he paid them. Even when a wild animal came to eat of the stuff of Laban, which was not Jacob's fault, Jacob still paid it. He testifies in the scriptures. He says, I've been 20 years in thine house. I served thee 14 years for thy two wives. Six years for thy cattle. And thou hast changed my wages ten times. And he tells him even for the, for the, for the ewes, when, when they produced and then they died, I paid for them. Because it's in my character. There's a heart God is preparing in the trickster called Jacob. That however wicked this man is, he's cheating you 20, 10 times. Yes, he can change his salary 10 times. Yes, granted. But when his ship goes missing, I'm not going to get... I'm not going to take advantage and say, let it go missing. Because he cheated my salary 10 times. I'll not rob of him, of his ship, because he cheated me 14 years with his girls. No, I am building a certain destiny. And there's a heart in my spirit. The responsibility he has placed on me is for 12 tribes. It's for a nation. It is the time I'll give Judah the scepter to say that when they were killing your brother and wanted him dead and they had even plotted to kill, you are the one who comes through and says, don't kill this guy. He's our blood. It's a character. It's something that has to be learned inside. It, it is in there. There's a fathering spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's only when the man is going to leave that the mystery comes through. Do not depart from me. For I have perceived by experience that the Lord has prospered me because of it. Wait. So you knew all this while when you changed my wages, duped me with your two girls. You understand? Your cattle, your animals were missing. I replaced them. You still knew there was something on my life and still could do that on me. Yes. Because that's Laban. But Jacob, this has nothing to do with Laban. It has everything to do with you. Still serve. Because I'm preparing you for something way bigger than Laban can ever take from you. That is a man of God. There's a seed I have to produce in you. That when you're talking to 12 tribes... There is a way you will speak to them. There are words you will speak into them. And these are the things that will maintain the character that has sustained the blessing of Israel. Israel is still a blessed nation because the words of Jacob still resonate through the twelve tribes. Go to Israel right now and find anybody in the tribe of Judah or the Benjamites. You meet them. They all rehearse the words Jacob spake up to this day. They have them on their walls as family emblems. And up to today, the Israel person, whether they're in Israel or across the world, they're still blessed people. Because one man's heart was toward God. Look at David, a man after God's own heart. Some of the things you're going through, this, where you make losses, those things have nothing to do with the losses you're making. 
God is preparing your heart. How do you respond when money is not coming through? How do you respond when temptation comes your way? How do you respond when somebody speaks a word on you? How do you respond when you don't have the grace to pray? How do you respond when things... You understand? How do you respond? How is your state of your heart? It's God and his man. The state of his heart. What is in your heart, man of God? Because you cannot have a certain grace to apply a vision with a very indifferent heart and spirit. A certain heart and spirit. Look at the Bible and see every man the Lord has blessed a certain way. And look at their heart toward God. You will realize it is different. It is different. You, you can put up all your shows all you want. That is why, they, for example, for preachers, you see a guy talking and he, he's not speaking enough sense to have a congregation. But the congregation is full. Then you find another one, they are speaking too much not to have a congregation. And they don't have it. He says, but you, you're too deep. You're too deep. Oh, businessman, you're too wise. Do you know men who give ideas? When the man starts talking, you're like, now this guy, eh? He knows where every deal is. He knows the gold dealer. He knows the one selling the brakes of a plane. He knows the one who is selling brake fluid of, a, of an aeroplane. He knows another one who is selling the carburetors of, 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 a, of a train. They, they, they know where everything is except their heart. And believe me, you can know the best deals in the world. You can have the best education in the world. You can go to the best schools in the world. You can have the best networks in the world. You can pursue the best degrees in the world. You can do the best diplomas in the world. You can even do masters upon masters. You can meet all the most famous guys you need to meet. But there is a place where God wants your heart. Man of God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor I have a vision. That is what sustains Jacob and Laban. Nothing else. Are you hearing me? Yes, he can live for giving him a duped deal of a child, of a girl. And he has to work 14 years. He said, but why are you working for 14 years? He said, no, I have a dream inside there. I don't know why. It still causes me to work for 14 years when everybody's sleeping. Are you hearing me? Why are you paying this? This is an animal. wild animal has eaten this. You are not supposed to pay it. Yes. It was not under my obligation to pay it. And before God, nothing would judge me for not paying it. But there's a vision I have in my spirit. I just feel it causes me to pay for it. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? The, the, I, I could let go of certain things and be okay and not be judged for letting them go. But I just can't let them go because it is me. That is what God has placed on me as a man. That is my dream. You, you get where I'm coming from? So I remember during those days of campus, I, I got a vision. I, I'm not going to share certain things until a certain age because when I do, then men will believe me. Some of you might not. Or you might think I'm proud. And so out of humility, I desire not to say but I'll tell you one thing. That, 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 that day I remember I received a vision in my spirit. And in that period I don't remember an operation that the Lord had on me like he had on my heart. Now when they speak of the experiences of the Holy Spirit. How he removes the heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh. The reality of the new creature is that we all possess the heart of flesh. We all possess the heart of good. Are you hearing me? But not many of us have embraced it. Not many of us appreciate it. Not many of us have understood the revelation of what that is. We are trying to be what we are already. Because what we are now has no bearing with what we are doing. And the confusion then comes because what I'm doing is not what is me. Therefore, chances are that maybe I am not this, therefore I have to be this. And so we get into a place of works eh, to become. 
I'm not drawing you to a place of works to become. I'm simply trying to help you embrace who you are. You were not created in the regeneration of spirit as a new creature with an evil heart. It's not in you. But some of you embrace it. Some of you yield to it. Some of you give in to it. Some of you, you are fighting not to be who you are. You, you are you getting my point? You are not called. No new creature has a heart of stone. But we have seen the manifestations of hearts of stone. Because many of us have failed to understand that you are what David prayed for. He created me a clean heart. No, for you, yours is there. The reality of it is there. But the challenge is that with the cleanness of heart, many yield into a place of evil, but the conviction in the heart of David to be like them. Why do, you, why do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if David should judge this matter, he's like, wait, I am praying to be what you are, and you have refused to be what my prayer is, and now you've shifted from there, and now come to my place, and you're also praying to be what you already are. <laughs> if you have understood it, shout hallelujah. Somebody say, I have a heart of God. My vision can sustain. Somebody say, Amen. So, so, the difference between the man in whom it is working for and the man in whom it is not is that the man in, in whom it is working has embraced and appreciated it. They have believed it and allowed the word of God to work through them as they believe who they are. Am I clear? Now I'm going to go a bit deep before I finish. So then I realize that for us, like I began, our true blessing is not in money. No. When the vision comes, you don't worry about money. No. Provision is part of the seven lights, guiding lights of the Spirit. When God has sent you into a scene, one of the guiding lights of it is that he will provide for it. He will provide. His vision is his bill. Somebody say amen. amen. So, why are you struggling financially? Maybe your problem is not money. Maybe your problem is vision. Why are you struggling in ministry? Maybe your problem is not struggling in ministry. Maybe your problem is vision. Why have you failed to break through? Maybe your problem is not the issue that is holding you. Oh, some of you think it's the generational curse. No, the, woo we a new creature. No, 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 no. We're not even discussing that. Your issue has nothing to do with that. No. Your issue is your vision. Many people do not know how to provide for it. You don't know how to provide for it. No man I have seen with vision does not deliberately pattern their life. It is not there. The true seed of a man with vision is that you don't do things by impulse. You do things by pattern. You put a certain order in your spirit. You, oh, I don't just submit. I don't just serve. I don't just pray. I don't just give. I don't just go to service. You understand? Eh? I, 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 you no longer have time to say, ah, now I just got bored and I say, to go, go, eh, to go, to go. Ah, ah, ah. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? When a man decides to pray, you pray. Are you hearing me? You don't pray. You pray. When you say you're going to fast, you fast. When you decide that I'm going to believe, you believe. He says, you are not of them that drop back to perdition, but of them that believe to the serving of the soul. Because I'm a man with a vision. I carry a certain pattern. And that defines the state of my heart and the way I walk with my heart. The way I carry my heart. For all of it are the issues of life. I remember after that encounter, you will understand it in a few minutes. I remember after that encounter, 
I started to pray deliberately. You understand what I'm saying? I started to believe deliberately. I can tell you, in our days, many young men saw God. I remember in campus, we had a visitation in UCU. My best friend, Magezi then, and still is one of my best friends now, Sam can tell you, in campus, we saw God in ways not many men have seen God. I'll give you an example I've shared before in a small meeting. One time, I was, I entered a room where there were about three ladies, and the Lord led me that we pray. And these were women of God. We prayed for like 15 minutes. Jesus, the son of the living God, appeared in that room. We all felt him. We all saw him. We all touched him. He started moving his lips. And fortunately, we could not hear him. And there was a lady in a corner called Mary. Mary could hear Jesus. And she says, I hear him. The, the presence in that room was too much that we were not crying. No, tears were just coming by themselves. You get it? It was too intense. The reality of the glory in that room literally could melt a bone. And I'm, now I'm talking about when a man really encounters Jesus. I'm not talking about those things that look like encounters and they are not. I'm talking of a real encounter. And I remember this Mary saying, I see him. We all could see, we could feel him. And I told her, you say what he say. Mary read my life from the day I was born to the day I would die. In that room. After that meeting, I couldn't talk. Because you see, it's one thing for somebody to say they are hearing God. It's another when they read your life. From the beginning up to the day you'll die. It sobers you. You start to realize that, no, you don't just live by mistake. No, you're not at your workplace by mistake. No, you're not Simanya married to that woman by mistake. You don't just produce children. You don't just drive that Volkswagen. No, you don't just live where you're living now. No, every time of your life is patterned by Jehovah God. Things might not be working the way they are working, but all of those things drove you to this moment where I'm speaking in your life right now. That something again is going to get you from where you are and take you to your next level. But it had to find you in Uganda at this day and doing nothing at this time. You're not wasting time. It was all ordained. Even the mistakes you've made in God, you realize that through the love of God, they all turn to good. Don't touch it again. Even the mistakes you've made, they are all working for your good. Because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. Those are the only two qualifications. You see, some people think, let me also clear this eh, once and for all. What made, when you say, oh, a man of God. I have about seven things that define a man of God. There's a stewardship. We can only be for the truth and not against the truth. That's deep. Eh? If I can explain that, no man of God can set himself against truth. Even the assumption that he can, you don't understand who a man of God is. Or you don't believe that he is. That's your problem if you don't believe. But one of the things that I've realized in the Old Testament, all through Scripture into the New Testament, you look at men like Job, who break hedges of their lives. You look at, like, at men like David, who kills Uriah, and marries Bathsheba. And all of these are grave mistakes. Grave mistakes. You look at men like Solomon, who marry the whole world. You understand? You, you look at men like Jeroboam and all this, and you realize all of these men made mistakes. They were not men of God because they did right. They were men of God because they believed on God. That is why I tell people, make all your mistakes mess up. Do all these things. God forbid, and I pray you don't. But however bad you become, still come back in the prince and tell God, I still believe in you.
Because in spite of the mistakes David did, God would still say, okay, you slept with Bathsheba. That is unheard of. If you did it in 2018, your ministry would die. All of this is you. But you're still a man after my own heart. I can separate you from it. Men can't separate you from it, but I can separate you from I still know you love me. Yes, you have made mistakes, but when I look into your heart, I do not doubt that you love me. Oh, but the Bible says that if you love me, you obey my commandments. Yes, I know that the obedience of commandments means that you love me, and I know that you broke some. But I'm no longer dealing on the issue of what you have done. I'm dealing on the issue of what I have done for you. You are responding to my love. You understand what I'm saying? And this love cannot fail to change you. I know that you're a part and process in the making. You see, you can even make these mistakes. But there is that man who still goes. That's why I tell people, the secret about David was simple. He knew how to find God, in spite of all this nonsense. He knew where to go in a certain corner. And God will still appear for him. Yes, they chased him out one time. His son threw him out. He won the hearts of Israel. It's true. And the man goes with the covenant box and the two priests... And amazingly, when a priest follows the man, and then you stay with the son, it doesn't make sense. Some of you didn't get it, but that's okay. It doesn't matter what a man loses. If he stays with the presence, the presence, that was the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, right? And, 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 and the man who's speaking his life. If that man, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how far you've gone. If you have men who speak in your life and you still respond to the presence of God, it doesn't matter when you'll be restored. Amen. Zadok and who? Was it Ananias? They went with him. And amazingly, the Hebrew word for Zadok means one who imputes righteousness. In all his mistakes, God is still saying, Boss, yeah, you're still my righteousness. Why? Because you have my heart. And I want to tell you, yes, men, you could have made mistakes. Hey, learn, on up, take responsibility. Move on, but move on. You, you, you get where I'm coming from? Yes, you've made errors. Yes. You're still a man of God. And his plans for you then are now and will always be. He has not changed. He still has plans for you. And I promise you, God will use you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We, we saw God very early. You, you understand what I'm saying? And for me, the first cancer tumor, it was home. Mommy brought a lady. She was dying of cancer. Stage four. She had come to say bye to my mother. She's still alive up to now. She's probably in her 80s now. I said to see miracles signs, wonders. And, and the people that we started with this gospel, I, they are guys who are even more anointed than we were in that day. But I can tell you, men of God, those men are not standing. They have not fallen from the faith. They are still believing. They are still praying. They are still fasting. By the way, our whole group during those years, all of them up to now can demonstrate power. Something didn't happen. They were anointed, still are, but something did not happen. There was a baby that was not pushed. There was a vision that was not realized. There is something that up to now has not come out. And it's all of us, by the way, like that. See, all of us are at the same level in a way depending on where we are at individually. You might find that there are three people who are on the same, like seven are the same, like 20 are the same, but not all of us are going to be the same next year. No, no, no. Some people think, we just woke up and then we began Fanero, then we tell people, see, and they say, ah, see, and then the numbers came. No. They don't realize that there were 10 years, 12 years, of a certain process. But this process was heart and vision. It, it had 
not much to do with what you think is. No, 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 no. And I'm going to go a bit deeper into that. I've recently I shared a book with uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Sentongo, the book of the Sultan of the Emirates, one of the seven Emirates, Al Maktoum. Eh? If you read his book, Flashes of Thought, if you read Flashes of Thought, this is a Muslim man. If you read Flashes of Thought, you'd realize he's not built the Emirates by mistake. You, you read the man's heart and revelation in the matter and understand why Dubai is what it is. If some of you have been through the Dubai, the airport, it harbors 50 million people going through it every year. That is already way past the, the population of Uganda, which is what, 34 million? And now he has extended it to 100 million people every year. They've paid now, right now they've paid the biggest deal ever. They've paid for the S380s. Eh? 36 billion dollars. Now, some of you, if you don't know S380, you can't understand. S380 is, is like the biggest passenger plane now on the face of the earth. It has an upper deck and a lower deck. First class is there. They even have bathrooms. Mukama. <laughs> Somebody say vision. You, you understand what I'm saying? Only business class is like you're in heaven. Only business class. Now when you enter first class, my God, you can speak all the tongues in the world. You're talking about things of the world. No, but they teach you spiritual things too. Uh -uh. You see, I'm a local, oh, fire, I'm the head, not the tail. <laughs> then Al-Maktoum is paying for jets. We shall lend to nations. We shall not live to borrow man. Just give me 10 k and I'll finish. I'm, I'm just going through a small affliction. It's just temporary. Two, three months. <laughs> Send me ten k. Tell your neighbor far from me. Chigambe. In the name of Jesus. God is working something. How many of you believe it? God is working something in my life. You realize they're not doing it by mistake. Everything you read is the man's heart in the matter. It's his vision meeting the right place of heart. That's why it, that's God is asking that. Reconcile your vision with your state of heart. In who you want to have made you to be. Embrace it. You'll be amazed what's going to come. Because out of this thing are the issues of life. Uh, they flow out of there. If, 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 if you, you yield to corruption, you yield. Not that you're, corrupt, you're not corrupted, but you can yield to it. Because of deception, immaturity. And deception is key. In this issue. Anyway, back to the point. So, we encounter God. And, but over the years I started to realize that there was a way I started to see the gospel. And I'm not sharing this to become a standard. No, I'm sharing this as an example of many standards here. If men, there are people here who have their own stories. And if you listen to them in their own rights, they will bless you. you. You get my point? Now, you have a vision. And I remember one day. I remember one day. I just woke up and I couldn't eat lunch anymore. And I was not fasting. But I didn't know anymore how to have lunch hour with food. It just died. Just like that. You get my point? Eh? Of course, those who judge Panero, they don't see that. You, you get my point? Eh? And it's not a working that you decide to... No, it is grace working in you. It's simply grace working in you. And you have the choice to allow that grace to or to refuse it. But there was grace for me. Grace. And you see, amazingly, the grace of God has appeared to all. But not all have embraced it. It has appeared unto all men. But not all men embrace what has appeared to them. Grace, you see, that's why it's called appear. Because it's a revelation. It's not just a simple happening in a square root X. No. It's a revelation. It has to come in appearance. And become visible to your spirit. You see? And then I started to realize that I couldn't eat lunch anymore. And lunch hour, while guys were eating food for us, we were eating kapatele, ra. 
course, sita la bazete, kosa. Now graduation comes. And I graduated, I passed very well, Sam is my witness. And the next thing I know, after I gave my father the degree, actually I'm the only child whom they didn't make a party for. So I handed him over his books, I told him, boss, are you happy? <laughs> we're cool now, yeah, we're cool. Now, there's something that comes inside you. Eh? Up to now, I didn't have words for it. Eh? I knew that it was there, but it was... You, you get it? The next thing I know is, every day, I was in the presence of God. Every day. I was preaching almost every day. Now, counseling started to come through. Only one time my mother sat me down. You no longer have our time. For every time you are praying... Uh, and I, you know, me, I didn't know that I'd, I wasn't giving them time. I honestly didn't know. Me, I thought I was giving them a lot of time. Why? Because I could pass her in the morning and say, good morning, mommy. I said, that was enough time for a man of God. You understand what I'm saying? You, you get what I'm trying to say? Five years into the gospel, after graduation and banking, I wake up to the fact that all my salary used to go to the gospel. It was a realization. It was a revelation. It wasn't a decision that I made. Now I decide. No. I just, every salary I used to make in the bank, KCB, I just used to find myself putting in the gospel. I used to pay for what? You get my point? Eh? I used to pay for, you know, uh, there's a guy in this meeting right here. This guy reminded me of something. I had an opportunity to observe his life. Somebody gave him some little money. Some little amount of money. And the guy was broke. And I know that he was broke. And then he had friends who were going for a meeting. And they didn't have money. And the guy got all the money that was given to him. And he gave it to the friends so they could go for mission. And I got to this young man and I, I, I told him. I, I, know, I don't think he understood what I told him. But I told him, you have a vision. You have, you're seeing something. By the time you substitute your livelihood, pocket money, for another man's success and to disregard your own, let me encourage the men of God here. Man, you see pastors seated here, but you don't know even a half of what of these men of God goes through. We live in churches, some of you come from churches, you understand, where even a bulb can go out and they say, man of God, <laughs> the bulb. <coughs> Are you hearing me? Whether the man of God has money or he was paid, you wish you don't pay, the guy goes through his pocket. Because he has a vision, he buys a bulb. It's embedded inside there, there's a vision and dream. It's in there. I don't have words for it, but... Every other day I see the glimpse of the little manifestation. It encourages me the more. Those little text messages when somebody says, Ah, you preached and blessed me. Are you hearing me? And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. You see, one time a, a kid came to me. A kid came to me for counseling. And then she told me, Apostle, I'm a third generation kid. And how many of you know third generation kids? Let me explain what third generation Third generation kids are kids who have parents who move a lot. Eh? So they, they move like from Australia, then they go to Canada because of jobs, and from Canada they go to where? So of course these third generational kids are dysfunctional in a certain way because they don't make friends when they are growing up, they are detached from their, their cultures early, they are detached from their friends early, they can't make friends, their accents seem like they are Americans, yet they have Luganda names, but when they start speaking you're like, oh, she was raised in Sweden and then she grew up in Australia and then somehow they threw her in America, those are third, third what? generation. So this one had come and said I felt cop because I'm a sad generation kid. Then I said now now may I tell you what <laughs> well, now if you've suffered, oh I'm so confused. My father then they took us to Australia. Then I did Simanya in, in the UK and then can you believe it from the UK I was just trying to cope and then they took us to Namibia and then from Namibia just before I could cope they took us to South Africa. Now I'm here back in Uganda. Apostle I can't cope. If you're sure you come from far, put up your hands. Some of us it's even a miracle to be in Kampala. It's even a miracle to be speaking English. 
I don't know whether I have witness. Obama mwe mwakulira wano mengo wano. Ngamufuga obugali. Walu abantu gabakulira mengo. Even their childhood stories. Can you believe when I was younger Tom stole, stole my bike. Bike, bike. Me, me bike. Bike. Simanya my Sega Mega. Sega Mega. In those video games we played video games. Recently, somebody sent me a photo and told me, did you use these phones which do like this? I told him, ah, for us, we were too rich to have them. <laughs> Translate it. <laughs> somebody shout, hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God! Amen. Praise God! Amen. And recently, this man comes and tells me, we have organized for you five thousand pastors a thirty thousand crusade member and in my head i'm like rubega grace matovu mutavani wa paulo matovu mutavani wa yokana matovu mawogola if it is not for rikabakota landa koski sekete i don't know who i'm speaking to i don't know whether i have a witness here do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? What I'm trying to say is it's not about where you came from. It's not about who you know. It's not about who you even don't know. It's not about who favors you and who doesn't. It doesn't matter who qualifies you and who doesn't qualify you. There is something inside you. It's only a matter of time. Come on, let me say it to your spirit again. If you didn't catch it, catch it now. It's only a matter of time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm not yet there. But I thank God for the road that is taking me there. At least there are lights telling me it is possible. You, you see, some of us, we are hope. Some of us, I'm not, I'm not boasting, it's the truth. Some of you just look and say, ah, God, if that guy, ah, ah, even me, I am coming. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter which stage, which state, which radio, which, if that guy, if Lubega Grace Matovu, can, it's only a matter of time. Somebody say, I have a vision. That is why we pray the way we pray. Don't be mistaken. We are not praying because we are desperate. We are praying because there is something inside us telling us there is a day that is going to come. Of reckoning where men are going to look back into me. And they must find that that which the Lord had blessed inside of me somehow came out. You know, there are people who don't understand me. But there are people who understand me. That even the place you're in, people can admire you. But even when they admire you, when you look inside, you feel you have not yet begun. When you do. Do, do I have a witness in the house? Some people look at you and they say, ah, for you man, you arrived. But when you look inside, you're like this, no. And they say, ah, no, you're not grateful. No, no, it's not that we are not grateful. No. My gratitude is not because of where I am. Don't be mistaken. My gratitude is because of what he has placed inside me. If I can thank, I'll thank him for what is inside me. But don't be mistaken that what you have seen is all there is. I might be still sleeping hungry. But there is something inside there. Nchiwulira. 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 We, we started going for overnights. And people started to think we don't have food. Oh, just landlords are chasing us. No, you're not. No, no. We were not going for overnight because, no. We were going for overnight. You understand what I'm saying? You find yourself in the presence of God. You don't know why you've gone to pray, but you're there. You're seated. You understand what I'm saying? You find yourself giving a certain way. You don't even know why you're giving, but something is telling you. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And now I started to look back at how the Lord is working in my life. 
You know, you know those times when you're too confused and nobody understands you? Kutesa used to come and tell me, you're a man of God. Then he walks away. Then I'm saying, well, what is this guy saying? He says, no. You're a man of God. One time I demonstrated too much power. And they told me, oh, you're a cult. Then I came to my brother. I told him, my brother, am I a cult? <laughs> then he told me, no. That is called the power of the Holy Spirit. It works in all who believe. Both to the Jew and the Gentile. So I told him, so what do I do when people start flying? He told me, no. If they start flying, make them fly more. Because this is the working of the Holy Ghost. I, I tell you, you need some people in your life. You need people who can see your madness. And they don't calm you down. They make you a bit more crazier. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then one time he attended an overnight. And I preached and the power moved. And then he went back home. He says, uh-uh, that's not Grace Lovega. He's Benny Hinn. Start calling him Benny. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And then he said, what do you mean? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This guy is another man. You're looking at this man. He's not, oh, he's another man. Then I went back to my bed and said, ah, Mukama, if my brother, Kutesa Ronald, says I'm a man of God, anybody can call me anything else. You understand what I'm saying? Kutesa Ronald, if he can call me a man of God, then I don't care what anybody calls me. Kutesa Ronald. Because... I said beds with him. We went to Gombe together. to go and What you can me God and say nene. One time we caught him saying nene, and Daddy said we are going to go and say nene. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so the next thing I feel in my spirit is that even though sometimes things might not show officially. Don't ignore that nudge that comes in your soul every day. And sometimes wakes you up at two. And it tells you, my ministry is not where it's supposed to be. Ah, man of God, don't just go back to sleep. God is saying there is something inside you. What do you call him? Tetina Vayo! Tetina Vayo! Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why men are awake when women are sleeping. Because sometimes, men, you understand, we have those two AMs, three AMs, where a man of vision wakes up. Then you start weighing yourself. You just find that at 3 AM you don't have sleep. But you, you, you're thinking about your ministry, your business, your job, your house. You're like, ah, oh, caca. And there's a man who is worse than you, but he's sleeping. That is why for me when I wake up at 2, it just reminds me that I have a vision. Every time I wake up at 3 a.m. and I look at the things that are not yet done, I start thanking God because they are done. I don't, I don't salah, I don't, I don't, oh God, I am poor. No, some of you, you get it wrong. At that moment, that's the moment you think negatively and confess negatively. No. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. waking up are the best moments of creating vision. You didn't just understand what I said. When you wake up at 2 a.m. And you first imagine, ha, I've not paid uh, money for the land. That is the point you understand. God is telling you, start creating man of God. Start creating. There's a reason why you woke up with that vision. There's a reason why you didn't just slip through. There's a reason why you're under that pressure at that particular point. Me at that 2 a.m. hour, I start waking up. I, I pay rokota. I pay Riko Ziba Kata. I pay Kandori Katala Baye. I pay Riko Soti Baya. I have more than enough Makatonda Riza Bata. Sika Toturi Mando Ziba. Kaprakate Kasito Toroba. You don't understand it. One time I was sleeping. It was last year. And I had a dream. And in that dream, almost half of Fanero had disappeared. And there were empty chairs. He 
in the back of the seat. And I woke up at about 3 a.m. in the morning out of that sleep. And during that time, we were about 3,000. And I woke up with, in the dream, I woke, the air chairs were empty. There is a man of God in Kampala I know. He was one of the biggest meetings holder in Kampala. I know him. I had a similar dream about him about six or seven years ago. I tried to reach him to warn him. I couldn't. After like six or five months from the time I had that vision, his ministry went down to the number I saw. Now I am here with the same dream. And my ministry is half. The 3,000 have become 1,500. And I'm seeing it in a vision, in a dream. And I wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I told God, I have seen it happen to a man of God and it came exactly this way. What are you telling me? And God told me, there is something that man didn't know. You, you know. I asked him, so what am I going to do? He told me, simple, what the enemy aimed for, bad, turned to good, let's double it. I said, what? He said, no, let's double this. He gave me a month and a debt of time and told me, watch from this month to that debt we've agreed. I'm going to double 1,000 people. They're going to become 3,000. Vision. I spoke in tongues that night. <laughs> that, ay, 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 Let me even first come down. You, you dreamt when they were killing you. Are you hearing me? That is the time you wake up and start giving yourself life. That's a man of vision. You dreamt when your money was getting out of the bank. I don't know who I'm talking to. At that given date and time, I agreed with the father. I did the counting. And after that given time, we had grown by 3,000 people. Minus the vision of one five. You understand what I'm saying? Then end of last year, the other year, an attack came. And we went down by about five and four, five, five hundred. And we used to sit there. And one time I told the girl, count for me how many chairs are empty. We counted. Now, Pastor, you, you understand. You, you understand. Someone might not understand. But if you're a man of God, you understand. For us, our food is not cars. Our food is when I see that chair. That it has a member seated on. Because every member represents a vision. Every, every number that adds on tells me that I believe in your story. So, I woke up. And we were seated. We were still in this building. And there were four, five hundred people there. Less. We had gotten an attack on the ministry. Oh, don't send these members. Don't go back. Some two ministries went on my back. Don't send their members there. The numbers went by four, five hundred down. I asked the girl, what's going on? She told me, Mze, we also don't know. It was a November date. And then they said, what should we do? And I told them, now this one is not yours. Man, I'm talking to you. I, I told the ushers, this one is not street preaching. It is not project unchurched. It can't be reaching out. Simanya letters. No, no, no. This one is not a problem that can be solved by an usher. It is not a problem that can be solved by a worshiper. It can't even be solved by, by, by an evangelist reaching out. No. I told her this was my business. She says, so what should you do? I told them, give me up to February. Give me. This is now me. I'm going to go back to what he called me to be. I'm not even going to consider whether they are 500 less or 400. There is something he told me when no man was there. Eh, Banango, why am I talking to a dreamer? Walwache ya kugamba musumanga fetetwari yo. Oi 
ayinzo kuba tonna kifanana tonna kiyingira mute kinna kufanana na yewe wali wobye yakugamba nga naye we wekero ganti mukama wayokera i know i might have made mistakes but you spoke i know that things might not be working the way they are but you spoke i know that that Thursday it rained but you spoke I know guys are hating. I know there are attackers. People are writing articles. Yes. They are calling me out. But you spoke. I went to the closet. Where we manufacture from. Somebody say manufacture. Kataraba kosa kata. I entered into my closet. Shata karaba koya. I locked that door. And I say God I gave my word by February. Of which it is impossible for you to lie. I know what is inside me. I know that thing that hit me that Tuesday. That Wednesday night. That 23rd September. 2006 when no man was watching. That thing. That is why I tell men. The greatest revelation. Eh, of your success. Not survival. Of your success. Is when you learn never to forget to look within when outside is failing. Oh, 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 there is nothing you are looking for. That is not inside you. The things you see are temporal. These things are temporal. There is nothing you see physically that defines you. Nothing. At that point, that was the point I had to draw to my vision or sink like the man who looked outside. That sometimes your vision is your life. Your vision is not just a, a small indulgence you go through on a temporal occasion of excitement. No. It matters most when you're under the pressure to perform in the presence of men who now start to say, look, he's going down. Look, he's going down. Didn't we tell you? 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 And, and that was the time I, I used to lock up myself every day. And I remember there were two, the 2 a.m. mornings. And every 2 or 3 a.m. when I woke up, my goodness, my goodness. I wish you had my prayer. I was not lamenting. I was not asking, I was not excusing, I was not pleading. I started to bring it forth. Literally, I used to get in my room and say, You, that which is inside that has no words, but was given to this nation to answer, Come out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. So she comes and tells me, how many chairs should we put since the numbers have gone down? I told him, don't look at the numbers. Put the chairs of the ministry. All of them put them there. And that's that would come and see them empty. But inside, I was seeing them full. And I would go back. How many should we put today? Put the chairs of the ministry. And then you come and see them empty. And then you preach. And then the next Thursday, put the chairs of the ministry. By February, December, January, February, we had grown by 800 people. You don't need to clap if you have not understood this. If you are a man of God, you understand. If you have pastored, you understand 800 people. Come on, am I speaking to a businessman? Am I speaking to a man of God? Am I speaking to a career man? Am I speaking to somebody with a dream?
Recently, I looked at the statistics of 2017. The month February was the month we won souls most in a funeral week, in a funeral month. The month of February was the month we won most souls in a funeral week. Meaning, God needed to finish my number. And from then on, In December, we bought another thousand chairs. They were filled in two weeks. Six thousand people are now praying on Thursday. And when I look inside, we have not yet started. They say what I need to give. Tell your neighbor to never. Tell your neighbor, I've not yet begun. Tell, tell somebody, I've not yet begun. The world has not seen anything yet. In the name of Jesus. The world hasn't seen anything yet. Tell, slap somebody, slap somebody, Mugambe. Mugambe, high five, Mugambe. Sinaba, 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 Sinaba. I've not yet. Tell somebody I've not yet. Slap somebody I've not yet. Live streaming centers increased from 5 to 25. Translate that to your ministry, your business, your... Hey! Tell somebody I have something. Hey, I have something. The Lord spoke to me. And you have to believe that He spoke to you. I don't care whether you've been right or wrong, whether you've made mistakes or not. Pick up your pieces, be forgiven, repent, change your mind, move on. The Lord wants to use you. Principle. Principle. Every man owes responsibility to their parents, their wife, their children, and siblings. You owe. You owe. You might not have enough money. Buy your mother a shoe. Buy your father a shirt. Buy him a pair of socks. But do it because it's a principle. That's why you forgive. Because you have a vision. There are men here. You entered wrong deals and you lost it. But the dream has not died. Every time you look inside there, you're like, this that I've lost has no comparison to what is inside. Somebody scream, come out! In the name of Jesus! We're not casting out devils now. We're casting a vision out of our... Hey! Hey! Let me tell you, Everything that will manifest outside you began from inside you. Everything. Everything. That's not a mystery. That's the truth. Everything you see. Even you coming here, you were meditating. Now go back home also. Meditate. Oh. 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 Something is getting birth tonight. Somebody is catching something. That is why we will not have marriage issues. We will not. No. We meditated our marriages long ago. Do you know why I delayed to marry? I am still constructing the vision. So that when I am done, now I am ready.
You don't understand. You, you don't understand. Read the story of Proverbs 31. Lemuel's mother came to Lemuel and told Lemuel, this is a virtuous woman. She, she didn't tell the virtuous woman what to do. No. She implanted the seed in Lemuel. These are the words of King Lemuel. The prophecy that his mother told him. Then she, she starts. A virtuous woman. Who shall fight? For her price is beyond what? This is Lemuel's mother. Speaking to who? Lemuel. You realize there was no point where Lemuel's wife was cancelled. Proverbs 31 shows Lemuel's mother telling Lemuel his wife. He did not tell Lemuel what his wife should be. He told Lemuel who his wife is. She wakes up in the morning, prepares food for her and her and her household and her husband while they are asleep. She considers the field and buys it. She does this. She's talking to Lemuel. She does that. She does this. She does that. She does this. She does that. Go to the second last verse. Then, after telling Lemuel all that she is, he looks into Lemuel and sees the wife. And then he tells her, in Lemuel, thou art fairer than all women. He says, many daughters have done virtuously. But thou, now he's telling Lemuel's wife. Where? Where was Lemuel's wife? Your wife comes from here. Your ministry, your business, your career, your dream. You excel them. He was telling Lemuel's wife, you excel them. Lemuel met a woman who was already wired inside him. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. That is what they call a man being ready to marry. By the time you fully apprehend the she inside you. Now you're ready to marry because you're not going to enter into arguments. Everything she is, you are. She can't be stupid. It will only mean you are stupid. She can't be quarrelsome. You caused it. <laughs> You're the head. How can my wife be quarrelsome when I'm not a quarrelsome man? How can she cheat when I'm not a cheating man? Can not happen. She came out of this. Your wife is everything you are. <laughs> That is why Abraham could not worry to produce in a barren woman. Oh, he knew. However barren she is, he has a covenant. Your children shall feel the earth. You understand? They shall be like the stars. And then you, you tell him that your wife is barren. Come on. I have a covenant with God that my children shall be as the stars. What do you mean that Sarah, she came up? Come on. Somebody shout Hallelujah! Because of time, I'm finished. 6.40. I have finished. Tell somebody we are going to... I feel... Listen. Like Pastor Gerard said, this was a prophetic service. You're going to make a prayer in three minutes.
that is going to get things out of you that people never believe that inside you. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Now I want every man at the sound of my voice start casting it out. Talk to it. It is inside there. The best is yet to come. The world has seen nothing yet. You are the next thing to happen. (laughs) It has to come out. I can see. Your eyes can see.
Hey. You might not have the job you want. You might not be in the career you believe. You might not be in the place of your ministry. You might not be in the house you dream. You might not drive the car you dream. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. There are issues a man of God can't sort you about. There are issues you have to sort for yourself. Sort them for yourself. This is not an unanswered issue. This is not a job of an usher. This, this is not a job of an intercessor. This is you and God. Let me come down. This is you and God. 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 This is you. This is you and God. This is you and God. Power. 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 Receive it. Power. Power. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Power. Power. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Your dream is as big as it began. The manifestation can only get better and better in the name of Jesus. I decree upon you that the latter is greater than the past. I decree upon your ministry. Today is the beginning of a kind of thing you've never seen. In the name of Jesus. I decree upon your finances. Today is the beginning of a kind of thing you've never heard. I decree upon your career. Today is the beginning of a thing you've never seen. I decree upon your family. Today is a visitation day. Receive it. Get it. Get a hold of it. In the name of Jesus. Great days await you. Forget the former. In the name of Jesus. It is well with your life. It is well with your family. It is well with your vision. Your dream is bigger. We are not looking at what you are going through. We are looking at who is you. Who you are in Him. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Stay there. Stay there. There is hope. 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 There is answers. There is breakthrough. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. Whatever you're dreaming to have, receive. Both of you. It shall happen. By no means in no other way. You are deeper than you think. You are deeper than you dream. You are deeper than men say. In the name of Jesus, you are a man of vision. You are a man of vision. Now I want you to clap for God like it has happened. Come on, celebrate God. No, no, no. Celebrate God. They've seen nothing yet. You're going far. You're going far. We are going to shake this world. Greatness is in this room. Supernatural deliveries. They are here. You will not speak God in vain. It shall not happen to you. In the name of Jesus. I can see. My eyes see. My eyes. My heart is alive to the vision of my life. 
I'll serve God in my generation. He will make your days beautiful. He will make your spirits attractive in the name of Jesus. Everything you do, it shall appear godly and glorified by God. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.